What's up, everybody? Sushi Patel here again uh, of Mailshake. I've got Mike Palladito from PandaDoc. We're going to talk about habits uh, to actually double your close rate. So I've never thought of like habits as something that can be impact revenue, right? But ultimately, like, you know, good habits, you, you exercise every day, you're not fat. So I guess like it could actually impact your close rate. So Mike, thank you for joining. Um, for those of you that don't know Mike, Mike, do you mind giving a quick introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's nice to, to be here with everybody today. My name is Mike Palladino. I'm the head of sales at PandaDoc. Um, I've been at PandaDoc for coming up on four years now. And um, I've sat in a number of different seats from, from SDR all the way to head of sales. So um, definitely have an interesting perspective um, and experience in a lot of these roles. Um, so really looking forward to, uh, to share some, some of the stuff that's worked for us. Awesome, Mike. That's awesome that you've kind of come up the ranks and, and kind of gone from the folks. You're, you're pretty much in the trenches. So uh, I, when, when you say improving habits, you, you got to listen to this guy, right? Ultimately, <laughs> you, you've done the job. You're not just like, you're not just like an, some sales executive, like, gosh, I need you to do this. Uh, no, that's true. And I mean, I have read a lot of books, so I do have, you know, some of that experience too. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of this is experiential and, and really just stuff I've stolen from uh, from things that, that I've seen work. Awesome. So I guess, where do we start? Like, what's the, what's the, what's the first habit? Like, what, what are, where do, where, where do we go from here? Yeah, I think before we really get into like, I guess, a, a concrete habit, I would say like, there's, there's a few, a few ways that you can increase, you know, your conversion rates or double up your close rates. Um, and I realized that, you know, some of the audience might have some different setups. So it might help to kind of break it down into a couple of different categories. But um, I would say, you know, from the discovery and from the qualification side, whether you have SDRs or you have full cycle account executives, you know, there's obviously a component there that's, that's um, going to increase some gains on, on conversion rates. Um, there's also stuff that we can do as account executives, um, you know, during a sales cycle that, that, can, that can certainly help conversion, whether that's staying top of mind, multi-threading yourself, creating some relationships with folks, maybe leveraging um, some of your internal resources to try to build relationships with, uh, with, with your buyers during a buyer's journey. Um, and then, of course, there's, there's just some, some small tactical stuff that, um, in my opinion, you know, all, all sales folks or client-facing folks can, can do, and that's, that's really just grittiness, um, hard work, um, and, and really trying to use all of the tools at your disposal to increase your, increase your odds of converting more. Um, so I think that when we, when we talk about, about um, you know, how to increase your conversion rates, like a lot of it's volume-based and a lot of it is quality-based. And, and for us at PandaDoc, we're, we're largely inbound driven on our marketing side of things. Um, so so our, our SDR to AE handoff and that qualification mechanism is extremely critical for us because we have such a high volume coming in, a lot of people raising their hands, and that's great. Um, but a lot of those folks are, are in different stages along the, the awareness um, and, and maybe don't necessarily know what they're looking for. They just know that they have a problem. So um, on the inbound side of things, it's really about whittling down that interest into quality conversations that can be handed off to um, the account executives. So I think that the first piece is really a good, good feedback loop between whatever your prospecting engine is um, and whatever your closing engine is. Um, so I think that would probably be a decent place to start. Does that sound good, Sujin? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think you have got a couple of good um, suggestions here. So I guess like how, how do you tighten that up or how, how, how do you kind of improve that? I, I mean, I know there's problems, right? Like we know that there's different departments, different things. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing, uh, especially the larger the team gets. Um, how do you keep it tight? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I think that, that um, most importantly, we need to be singing from the same sheet of music. So there needs to be some sort of a consistent language that we're using on the client facing side or, or even in any, any business for product to really understand kind of what we're doing as well. But, but specifically from marketing all the way to post sale, we need to be using the same language. Um, so, so we call that our, our customer journey or our buyer's journey. Um, and, and obviously through those phases going through the marketing funnel, the sales funnel, and the, the post sale funnel, 
um, we, we want to, to tie those wagons together and make sure that it's a cohesive, consistent experience. So on the prospecting side and the qualification side, we use um, a variation of BANT. I'm sure some folks have heard of BANT on the line. That's budget, authority, need, and time. Um, it's a little old school, and I, I don't know if we want to put budget for first anymore. Um, I know buyers are not really interested in talking about uh, budget right off the bat. It's sort of like asking uh, somebody their credit score on a first date. Um, it's not really the best practice. So we, we, we did a variation of BANT, which we call UNTAB, um, which is use case, um, need, timing, authority, and budget. And we try to do it in that order. Um, so when an SDR is, is qualifying somebody on the phone, um, first and foremost, we want to understand what their use case is. What did they come to solve? What is the most immediate pain um, that, that we can make the biggest impact in changing or solving for them? So that's where we, we talk about the use case. Um, if we have a solid use case, odds are we're going to have a decent conversation, um, but we need a little bit more. Um, so then, of course, there's, there's the need. You know, what do they specifically need and how do they need it? Um, so, so that's the second most important piece. And, and with need, it's really much more about setting up the account executive to have a relevant conversation. So it's like, these are probably the features that this customer would need, um, or these are the integrations that somebody would need. It's a little bit more technical, a little bit more specific to, um, the solution itself. Um, and then there's timing. So urgency, right? Like urgency is extremely important for, uh, for an account executive to understand because if somebody's coming in and they're really just in an awareness phase trying to, to try to understand kind of what's out there, um, there's not much urgency. Are they going to be accountable for next steps? Are they really compelled to buy if they don't have a specific timeline? Um, I, I'm not so sure. So timing is extremely important as well. And then the last, the last two, you know, authority and budget. Um, much more relevant, I think, for the account executive, but we still try to advise our SDRs to get this information if they can. Um, so, so, you know, authority being, is this, is this somebody who can get things done within the org? Is this somebody that we can trust to champion our product internally if we can't get a hold of that decision maker? Um, so authority is also important. Are we talking to somebody who's, who's lower level and really just doing some eval for somebody that's higher up, pulling the strings? Or is this, you know, a stakeholder that is really interested and compelled in solving this product, uh, this problem? And then, lastly, of course, budget. Um, we reserve this for the account executive conversations. We don't really love our SDRs talking price too, too much. A because they don't really understand it as well as an account executive does. Um, and we we do like to do a little rediscovery on a second call or a discovery call. You know, the first call that account executives having with the prospect. Um, so we try to reserve the budget conversation there. Um, but again, we need to understand if this is worth our time and if this customer actually has um, the resources internally uh, to purchase what we're pitching. Um, so that's, that's basically that cohesive language that we use between SDR and AE um, to try to maximize the, uh, the qualification of the opportunities that are coming through the pipe. I love that. I love your untap, right? Uh, one more time for folks who didn't catch it because you just dropped like 15 nuggets there. <laughs> All right. So uh, untap, um, use case, need, timing, authority, budget. Um, and that's a variation of BANT. We just added a few letters and shuffled it around. And moved it around. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. I mean, well, look, things got to get updated or applied to your business. So that makes sense. I love, you know, I think with Panadoc, you guys have a lot of uh, inbound leads, which is awesome, which causes another problem, which is your sales SDRs have to qualify them and, and getting this information before the AEA. To me, it look at this as like, this is all the gold that you want to know about a customer before you try to sell them something. Right. Or at the start of it. So I like that you're getting it up front before like you get into the AE. Um, we talked before about storytelling. Do you guys leverage storytelling and in, 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 in how so? We certainly do. Um, and, and probably in two ways. Um, one is what we would call the hero's journey, um, which is, is really placing um, your new prospect sort of in the shoes of somebody who's done it before and seen success, you know, before. So 
that's one way that I'm going to get into. And the other piece is really just storytelling when you're, you're demoing. So like actual demo mechanics, um, as you're showing, make sure that what you're showing is, is a part of a cohesive story that's relevant to some of the pains and problems that you've heard during your discovery. Um, much more of the show piece of the show and tell of the demonstration, but I think I'm going to focus on, um, on the hero's journey. Um, so imagine, you know, you're speaking to a customer in a second call, let's say with an account executive and, and um, you know, you know that you have a pretty decent use case with somebody and, and it, it seems like it's, it's something that we've done before. Um, step one in the hero's journey is making it personal and relevant. Um, so think about like this talk track, you know, oh, that reminds me of uh, Olivia, you know, like I specifically say somebody's name, um, you know, make it personal. Much like you, she's a VP of sales at a B2B startup based in Florida. So I've already kind of explained a relevant, a relevant story that I'm setting up and made it very personal to the customer. Um, it's the same type of person as you, you know, like the same role. Um, they have a name, they're an individual. It's not just a customer of mine that had a similar problem. It's very specific and it's intentional to use that type of language. So step one is really making it personal there. Step two would be, you know, pointing to pain and describing what that negative impact might be for the buyer. So going with that same, that same role play, um, you know, Olivia had no visibility into how her reps were interacting with prospects late in the sales cycle. Um, and this led to a lack of predictability and weak forecasting when closing out the month and the quarter. Um, so now we're, we're pointing to the pain that she had, no visibility. Um, this is the same pain that the customer I'm speaking to now has, so it's relevant for them. And that negative impact is, is potentially the same as it is for the customer I'm speaking to, but it will at least be relevant to that type of a persona. So we talk about predictability, weak forecasting. These are things that those types of personas care about. And then the last piece is ending with the solution um, and pointing to the positive impact. Um, remember, the, the hero's journey, it's really the customer is the hero here, not PandaDoc. Um, so, so we're going to, well, PandaDoc for us, um, whatever it is that you're selling for you guys. But, um, so the, the way that this talk track is sort of wrapped up is after implementing a proposal platform into her workflow, Olivia has been, has seen, um, an increase in productivity while also increasing her forecast accuracy to plus or minus 5%. Um, so, so now we've, we've bookended that with, with the actual solution, a proposal platform a la PandaDoc when we're selling that. Um, and the positive impact to forecasting and productivity that she realized. Um, and, and again, the customer is the, uh, is the hero here. And if you think about sort of the sword and the stone analogy, you know, Arthur and the sword of the stone, King Arthur, it's like, we're telling the story to the customer, the customer is King Arthur, the sword and the stone is the product or Panadoc for us. So we're trying to enable that hero to find, uh, you know, the tool that is going to bring them to the promised land. Um, and that's kind of how we use, we use storytelling. I love that. I love that. Even the first thing, just being very specific and personalized to the name and, and, and every little detail about that can go so much further, right? You, if you don't, uh, it, this is kind of typical marketing. If you don't, you could spend a bunch of time doing stuff, but if you don't engage them in the very beginning, the rest of it's useless. So I think it's super powerful. And I love the fact that you guys are getting the forecasting accuracy to, around 5%. That's, that's freaking amazing for uh, an SDR and, and a sales individual to be able to actually predict. Um, so that's awesome. So I want to, I want to talk about the, the kind of the next thing. What, what are, what's another thing people, uh, I guess, habit or, or things somebody can do better? Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the topics we talked about before Susan was, uh, was, you know, the I call it sort of overselling, um, but but I think that Mail Shake's phrase is is selling past the sale, which I, I also like. It's 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 pretty sweet. Um, but but a lot of this is about about focus. You know, um, plenty of inexperienced reps will show up to a call and just feature dump. You know, just throw everything in the kitchen sink out there and see what sticks. Um, of course, we need to show features, but we really want to, to keep the conversation relevant and focused. Um, so what is the prospect's most important priority? You know, we talked about untab before, like what is their use case and what is their need? Like we put those at first and second because we want to focus on those uh, while, we're, while we're doing the rest of our sales cycle. 
Um, so what is the fundamental problem that they're trying to solve? Like, let's focus on that first. Um, and, and instead of dumping a bunch of features that we assume might be relevant, let's focus on those ones that will actually provide them with the most upside. Um, you know, if you're feature dumping, it's going to lead to a couple of things. Um, probably a confused prospect because they're wondering, hey, what the hell am I going to use all this stuff for? Um, I came in here with what I thought was kind of a simple, simple problem. Can we solve this? Um, and the second, the second thing it leads to is uh, a, a waste of valuable time. Um, you might be spending time on a demo showing something that the customer just does not care at all about. Um, and that's the worst. Time is money, especially in sales. I mean, we need to be productive with every single word that we say on a call. Um, so, so really, you need to focus on what matters for the buyer. Um, the other thing that, that this, this type of style of overselling or selling past the sale leads to, um, we, 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 see, we see it manifest in talk time on client calls quite a bit. So rep to prospect talk ratio it's like two to one when somebody's doing a poor job. Like I, I don't like seeing a rep speak for two thirds of the time on a call. I actually want to see that ratio reversed. So when we're looking at our, our call x-rays, as we call them, we want that ratio flipped. Um, and by focusing on that, on that priority or those, those top line issues that a customer needs solved, you build trust. Clients are going to open up and they're going to remain accountable for action items and next steps moving forward because they know that, you are listening and that you are aligned with their needs. Um, so, so oftentimes people think, oh, rapport and, and talk your way into, into trust. It's like sometimes it's more about listening and focusing your efforts into what you're really hearing the, the, the customers and the buyers say. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, we want to take the path of least resistance here. Um, there's always time to upsell and cross-sell um, later on. So instead of being greedy and shooting for the moon, like stay focused on what the customer needs first and foremost, get that customer in the door. That's the hardest part. Uh, but once they're in, you know, expanding them is easy. So don't show up and throw up right away. Uh, show up and listen and like really, really focus and align with that buyer in a customer centric way. Um, and, and things will be better. You'll, you'll definitely have uh, stronger conversations and, and progress things at a much more predictable rate. Awesome. I love that. Um, one of the things you mentioned is um, around this whole thing is that kind of staying top of mind and the relationship. Um, how do you, you know, I, I think you, you've got some pretty good ideas and tactics you guys do use at Panadoc and you've done in the past. Can you, can you share kind of how to stay top of mind during this whole process? Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, First off, I feel like you kind of need to, to understand the roles of the folks that you're speaking to first and foremost and, and really address them as individuals. We talk about personalizing your storytelling. Um, the same can be said for trying to stay top of mind with a, with a, a buying committee or an individual on a buying committee. So um, knowing who you're speaking to, addressing them personally with the first name um, and understanding what they care about, um, you know, it, it will it will allow you to to really show relevant um, relevant aspects of of your solution um, and allow them to kind of understand which piece of what you're showing is relevant for them. So at first, I kind of like to understand everybody who I'm speaking to on a call, whether that's introducing myself or doing a little bit of research pre-call to understand who's joining. Um, I like going, I like going into a call that way. And one way we've, we've used, you know, technology to help with this. We have an automated notification that pops up before a, a scheduled uh, event. Uh, it's about, I think it's 10 minutes before the demo. Um, and, and our team's doing five plus demonstrations a day. So ideally you could prepare for this a little bit better, but um, we're high velocity. So um, we don't, we don't have that luxury all the time, but what this notification does, it encourages the rep to connect with any of the folks that are actually on that calendar invite via LinkedIn. Um, so this allows you to actually do a little bit of homework in a pretty easy way. Um, you know, pre pre call. And now you're going into the call and you, you don't need to wait for an introduction. You can say, Oh, you're the director of marketing or you're the head of sales. Um, it gives you a lot more, a lot more clout going into those first calls. Um, the, the other piece is, is, you know, leveraging all of the new kind of tools that we have now, whether that's recording videos, um, you know, following your prospects and interacting on social, um, is another great way. You don't want to overdo that. Um, you know, but, but interacting with social is, is definitely a, a value add when you feel like it's, it's the right relationship you have with, with a buyer. 
Um, we, we also ha- want to try to have communication chains like all the way to the top. Um, or do we even need to communicate all the way to the top? Or can we do that through a champion? Um, you know, these are things that we definitely want to keep top of mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in terms of staying top of mind, those are, those are some of the, the ways that we do that. Um, the, the other piece too is, is, you know, if you're a little bit deeper down a cycle, um, we like to use this phrase called maps, which is our, our mutual action plan for success with, with a buyer. And sometimes individual stakeholders have, um, their own, their own action items in between calls that are required, right. For, uh, for, for, for progress within the opportunity um, or, or with the solution. So uh, mutual action plans for success, uh, it, we tie that in with the, the, customer, the customer journey, the buyer's journey, um, and that really becomes uh, the, the story and, and basically the project plan for, um, for a, a sales cycle. And if we start to see that, that people are going dark on us, um, because we're multi-threaded with multiple stakeholders, um, and we've built a little bit of trust. Uh, we've earned the right to sort of ask these types of questions and ask for insight when folks are kind of starting to go dark. So another way to stay top of mind is is really holding folks accountable for things that they say they're going to do. It's it's an awkward it's an awkward conversation sometimes, but it's essential um, if you're going to be respecting one another's time and and make sure that we're moving in a mutually beneficial direction. Um, you, you certainly need to be willing to hold folks accountable. So, um, you know, another way to stay top of mind is actually to challenge, challenge your prospects a little bit. Um, they'll, they'll understand that you care about what you're doing and that, um, and that, you know, if, if they do go dark, when they come back, it's going to be a productive conversation. Um, so you got to kind of think about the future there. What, um, what, what other stuff are you guys doing? Sujan, are you hearing in the market about this stuff? I'm always interested in hearing. Um, new tactics for staying top of mind. Yeah, I think um, I think what I've seen is that's a great question. And, and by the way, thank you for sharing the maps thing. I love I love it. You have all these systems and and things to kind of help. I, I found I call them like checks and balances in my head. But uh, what I'm seeing is you know there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of technology you can use, uh, but it's really about get how do you jump into the conversation with somebody? So like the connect is great. Um, but if you can kind of jump in into, let's say, you connect with them on LinkedIn, you, you send them like a, you know, video, I think you, one of the things you mentioned or uh, is, a, is a personalized video, but uh, is how do you get the engagement um, bef- outside of the email chain um, or conversation around the sale? Um, or maybe that's a before or after. So I think a lot of what, what I've heard from other, other smart folks like um, has been all around like, engaging in, in many other platforms wherever they're kind of they're at or their 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 channel yeah i mean it's sort of like multi-threading yourself with with different technologies so um one relevant uh way that we kind of bake all of that into one thing is is actually panadoc um so by using a proposal a proposal platform um you now have another another way to communicate with your customers um so panadoc has video as well. So we'll send our follow-up documents um, right in Pandadoc with a personalized video that's sort of recapping what we did in a demonstration. Um, And that can be shared with, with anybody in the, in the, in the business uh, who maybe didn't join that call. And now you actually kind of have a face-to-face introduction to a decision maker that you haven't met yet. Um, And, and while we're moving away from, uh, from, from outside sales and and in-person sales and stuff like that as an industry, um, I, I, I can't say how, how I can't underplay how important it is to actually bring back the human aspect of selling. And, and that's why at Panadoc, we always have our videos on our cameras on when we're doing our demonstrations, we want to have that personal engagement. Um, and that's why we leverage video during our in-between selling. Um, you can also communicate via Panadoc, um, you know, with comments, uh, or notifications for when folks are viewing documents. So Again, these are just signals that that suggest that you are top of mind, and um, and to your point, Sujin, if you can multi-thread yourself with with technology, whether that's social, uh, email, phone, texting is huge now these days. You know, if you feel comfortable doing that, um, and of course, tools like Pandadoc are, are useful for for staying top of mind and maintaining maintaining traction. 
I love it. That's awesome. I love how you guys are eating your own dog food of, of using the tool and, and software to kind of use and close that deal. So Mike, thank you very much for joining. This has been very, very awesome. Where can people kind of um, keep in touch with you? Well, LinkedIn is a good one. Feel free to connect with me on there. Um, my email is super easy to remember, mike at pandadoc.com. So please feel free to ping me in my inbox. Um, and if you're looking to sign up for a free trial of PandaDoc, you can go to our website and sign up for a demonstration. We'd be happy to talk to you that way as well. Yeah, I challenge everybody here, and I, I've done this before uh, with you guys specifically. Uh, so I know you guys practice what you preach. Go sign up for a demo and go through this process. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be pleasantly surprised about the detail, the level of detail. I've done this twice now, by the way, Mike. You, I didn't tell you this. And it's, it's, it's stellar. You guys do a, uh, a great job. I wow. purchased one time, so it's not like wasting your time. I actually <laughs> needed something and I wanted this. I was just curious. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. I'll give that feedback back to uh, to our, our biz ops and our marketing team that you really enjoy our sign up journey and uh, <laughs> and our, uh, our introduction to PandaDoc. But uh, yeah, thank you for the time today, Sujin. It was a pleasure. Um, and yeah, look forward to the uh, the next one. Sounds good. Thanks again. Bye.